The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Blue Memorandum, starring Lionel Barrymore. Ricardo Montalban is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is your family theater host for tonight, Ricardo Montalban. We as parents sometimes think we can measure the happiness and security of our homes by the amount we spend on food or housing or clothing or even by what we can spend on fun. <laughs> no, it isn't how much we spend on our homes that determines the happiness of our families. It's how much we give of ourselves, what we give our children of the true values of life. These are the things that make a real happy home. And the greatest gift we can give our children is an understanding of the important and powerful part that our faith and trust in God play in our own lives. The best inspiration and example we can give them is the simple and sincere expression of that faith by the daily practice of family prayer. Family prayer is a sure way to happiness, security and peace in most vital and wonderful way because it's God's way. Now, the Family Theater presentation of Blue Memorandum, starring Lionel Barrymore. Now take words, for instance. Consider their inflection, their enunciation. A few simple words like, good night. Maybe it was the way J.J. Rowland said, good night, that accounts for it. Lemon, J.J.? Yeah. You were saying something about Johnson. Johnson's the fourth chauffeur I've had in three months. Yes. And he's the most abominable one of the lot. Fired him, darling. I've already fired him. Good for you. He ran me into the thickest, foulest traffic I've ever seen. No excuse for it. I told Johnson, I told him exactly, explicitly, Route 57 was a bottleneck. You'd think the dunce would learn. Twenty minutes completely wasted in a crawling mass. Stupidity. Crass and stubborn stupidity. And how about the contract, Doc? Oh, I swung the contract personally. Good for you. I don't know what I'm paying those monkeys for down in the office. Who is it now, darling? Bibbins. Bibbins? Edward J. Bibbins, my general manager. Fire him, darling. Bibbins tried to advise me on pig iron. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> tried to tell me I shouldn't pull a pig iron deal under the present market trend. Oh, you showed him, J.J. <laughs> I pig ironed him. <laughs> trying to tell me about market trends. Bivens must be a dolt. I don't know where he studied business administration, but if brains were altitude, that boob's ten miles below sea level. You made him see your point, though. Listen, Ethel. When J.J. Rawlins says do, it's done. Good for you, darling. Where's Millicent? She's getting dressed. There's a birthday party... Oh, here she comes now. Oh. Good evening, Millicent. Good evening, Dad. Good evening, Mother. Uh, did you study your French today, Millicent? No, Dad. Why not? It's that new tutor, dear. She's incompetent. Uh, get another tutor. Oh, we've had seven tutors this past year. I got a better idea. Send Millicent to that bobolink on Bampton College. But it's so far away, J.J. Well, only 200 miles, a few hours trip. Darling, would you like to go to bobolink on Bampton? Well... I don't know, Mother. I was hoping to stay near home this year. Oh, it's a lovely school, Millicent. A very, very lovely college. Oh, really? I don't want to go away, Mother. What did you say? Are you questioning my decision? Oh, it's not that, Jay. It's just that she is a bit young to send away to college. She's only 17. I don't care if she's 70. Millicent? Yes, Dad? You're not a child anymore. You understand that. 
Oh, Daddy, I was only trying to say that... And you want to grow to be a lady someday? You want to make me proud of you, don't you? Yes, Dad. All right, then. Go to Bobolink on Bampton like a good girl and learn how to speak French. Mother and I'll have you home for your birthday. <laughs> now, you like that, won't you? Yes, Dad. Yes, girl. Now, you better run along. Oh, Dad. Yeah? I'd like to go to Mary Scott's birthday party. Eddie Oliver promised to take me, and if it's all right with you... Now, Millicent. I'm not saying that recreation isn't necessary. It's good has its place, but wasting time and a lot of parties is a different matter. But, Dad, I haven't been to a party in three minutes. Please, please, Millicent. It pains me to see you so headstrong when I say that you, a girl of your position, you, your background, rearing and uh, training, when I tell you that it's a complete waste of time to be running around with every Tom, Dick and Harry to parties, I expect to be listened to. You understand? Yes, Dad. Perhaps, perhaps you'd better go to your room, Millicent. All right. Good night, Dad. Good night, good night, good night. Yes, maybe it was the way J.J. said good night that accounts for it. And consider two other words. Happy birthday. Maybe it was the way J.J. said happy birthday that accounts for it. <clears throat> Sit down, gentlemen. Sit down, Bibbins. Gentlemen, I call this conference to remind you that we're supposed to be running an organization. At least I was always under the impression that J.J. Rawlins Incorporated was supposed to be an organization. Now, Bibbins. Uh, yes, sir? Bibbins. <clears throat> In my absence... I've been made to understand that the gentleman of the board commissioned you to close the Eddington contract. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. It was imperative that we get the plant One before... moment, please, one moment. You purchased the plant. As your representative, yes, sir. On whose appraisal? Why, uh, on the regular licensed appraisers. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I'm employing you to tell me what the licensed appraisers tell everybody else. Yes, but Mr. Rollins, under the circumstances, acting as I did as your purchasing agent... The only logical routine was Routine? To... Don't talk to me about routine, Bibbins. I appraise that plant. I, personally. I made it my business. You signed the papers for $40,000. Yes, sir. That plant's not worth $40,000. Mr. Rollins, the licensed appraiser. I, I don't give a tinker's toot about your licensed appraisers. You, Bibbins, you sold me down the river for at least $4,000. Mr. Rollins, and gentlemen of the board, it may be that I've made a mistake. I'm merely trying to be, and I believe I have been a competent manager in this. Uh, I didn't ask for a speech, Bibbins. Well, excuse me, sir. We were discussing that Eddington contract. I was coming to that. Mm. Now, as for this contract, I wish to say only this. Mm. I consulted the best real estate brains. I even went to the trouble to investigate six prior bank estimates. In my opinion, sir, 40000 was the fair and equitable disposition. Is that all you got to say, Bibbins? Yes, sir. All right. Now I'm telling you something. That deal doesn't go. But the contract is signed. I'll handle that contract, Bibbins. Well, the courts can be pretty strict. Never about... mind the courts. Another thing, Bibbins. Yes, sir. One more mistake like that, and you'll be getting a memorandum. Yes, sir. You won't be the first. And you probably won't be the last to get a blue slip. I see, sir. A blue. That's blue. all, gentlemen. <laughs> You were late tonight, darling. Oh, that new chauffeur's worse than Johnson. Fat head can't read. Mint sauce with your lamb, darling. Yeah. Another hard day at the office, I suppose. Oh, so, 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 so. I finally gave that parasite a going over. That Bibbins creature? <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> it's about time that you brought him to his senses, dear. I don't know why you tolerate such... We tried to put on a sister act, too. He Sabbath did? Sister. Yeah. Wouldn't you know? He said I was unfair. The insolence. J.J., why do you stand for it? I told him off. Oh, don't worry. I said to him, Bibbins... Wait, wait till you hear this, Ethel. It was inspired. I said, Bibbins, as far as I'm concerned, you've been nothing but an embolism in the artery of progress. Oh. 
<laughs> touche, touche, darling. Yeah, stopped him cold. Oh, you should have seen his face. It floored him. <laughs> For the count. I think that's so cute. <laughs> Embolism in the artery of progress. J.J., you're a dean. <laughs> then I straightened out that little contract detail, too. Uh, the Eddington plant I was telling you about. You're buying it? Oh, sure, I'm buying it. Yeah, but not for 40000 They thought they could scare me with the lawyers. Oh, high pressure stuff. Yeah, can you beat it? The cheap. But I told them, when J.J. gets on the phone, they come to terms, and they come to terms fast. They saw your point. They had my point. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I could break that Eddington outfit tomorrow morning if I wanted to. Wouldn't you think they'd learn? Ah, human nature, Ethel, human nature. But you'd think that people would... People! As old Jay Sr. used to put it, what can you expect from a pig but a grunt? <laughs> People. Oh, but by the way, it's Millicent's birthday. Oh, it's so? How old is she now? Seventeen. I thought it would be nice if we had her home for the entire weekend. Oh, good, good. Where's she now? Upstairs, resting. Hmm. I'll have Frida tell her to come down. Yeah. Yes, madam? Millicent, Frida. Yes, madam. Say, so who cooked this lamb? Elsie. Elsie. She came yesterday. A Green Star Agency recommendation. What's the matter with her? I don't know, darling. You know how it is with the help these days. Well, there is no excuse for a piece of meat like this. The stuff tastes as if it was basted with arsenic. I, I did think it was a little on the dry side. Get rid of her. See if you can't get a little civilization into that kitchen for a change. Get a mix master. I've got enough worry to the office without coming home something like this. Uh, there's some ham in the refrigerator. Ah, I hate ham, Ethel. Now, you know that. Hello, Dad. I didn't know you were home. Oh, good evening, Millicent. Well, you look quite the student. Wearing glasses now? Jay, it's her birthday. Wish her a happy birthday. Oh, uh, happy birthday, Millicent. Thank you, Dad. And thanks also for the beautiful fur coat. Fur coat? What? Fur? The coat you bought her, Jay. Oh, oh, yes, 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 the fur coat. It's mm. a beautiful coat, Jay. Mm. A cute mink. Mm. Got it at Bond Taylor's. Fine, fine, good. Yeah, you, you needed the fur coat, Millicent. Oh, really, Dad? It's the most beautiful coat I've ever seen. Good, sure, splendid. But, well, uh, how is school coming, Millicent? Okay, Dad. You put in a good day at the books? Well, today... I mean, Mother told me to... Her birthday, Jay. Oh. We thought we might have a little celebration, didn't we, Millicent? And we're going to have a party tonight, Dad. Huh. Well, wait, I'll bring in the birthday cake and let you see how lovely the frosting that's looks. That's all right, that's all right, Millicent. That's all right now. Don't bother. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, I won't be here tonight. Oh. <laughs> uh, got to look after a deal upstate. I see, Dad. Uh, run along now and enjoy yourself. Yes, Dad. Good night. Happy birthday, darling. Where's your happy birthday, Jay? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Millicent. Yes, maybe it was the way he said happy birthday that accounts for it. Maybe. Or maybe it was that inflection in his voice when J.J. said, Bibbins. Bibbins! You've bought 12 plywood monstrosities billed at $1,240. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Rollins. I think I know a good desk when I see one. And I can tell you that these are genuine white mountain... I don't care if they're genuine Pikes Peaks. Your responsibility around here, general manager, is to see that we function as a going concern instead of subsidizing a lumberyard to the tune of $1,240. All right. All right. This is just another example of your incompetence. Mr. Rollins, I've worked for you for over two years. In that time, to the best of my knowledge, I, I've done a good job. Mm. If at any time I've consciously, deliberately failed to carry out your... Well, we're talking about desks, Bibbins. I didn't ask for a backlog on your life. Well, as for the desks, I bought them. I installed them. If you don't approve them, that's your privilege. All I'm trying to say is that you can't get good desks any cheaper. I can't, can't I? Well, Bibbins, let me tell you something. First of all, those desks are going out of here tonight. Tonight? Tonight. And another thing, Bibbins, I want to teach you one more lesson in the art of business administration. Take a good look at your own desk tonight, Bibbins. Maybe you'll find something there that'll interest you. Is that all, sir? That's all, Bibbins. Did you have 
never hard, day, JJ. Oh, routine, routine, routine. I got rid of that boob at last. You mean that horrible bookkeeper you were telling me about? No, Bibbins. I fired him. Well, I should say it's about time you asserted yourself, darling. I told him. I suppose he tried to raise the usual objections. What objections could he raise? Oh, how do you do it, darling? <laughs> Simple. Slap him with a memorandum and sign it J.J. Rowland. <laughs> <laughs> the wheels turn when they see that blue flip. <laughs> oh, J.J. J.J., you're marvelous. Really, you are. <laughs> yeah. When J.J. says do, it's done. Want me to take it down? No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yep. J.J. Rollins. Speaking. Can you locate some ready cash? Ready cash? Right. Cash in a hurry. Who's talking? I'm asking you the questions. Can you locate some ready cash? I don't like your tone, mister. Well, you're going to like my tone, Rollins. You're going to like it with no questions asked. I want cash, and I want it in a hurry. And look here. What are you trying You've to do? You've got a daughter, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, she's up... Uh, she's supposed to be up at some fancy college. Uh, Barber Link on Bampton. Yes, I sent her there. Oh, 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 now, wait a minute. Now you're getting the idea, Rollins. Do you mean to say I that didn't you... say anything. Where's my daughter? Where is she? I'll ask the questions you understand. I warn you, if anything's happening... I'll also do the talking, Rollins. Now, get this straight. Don't you make any phone calls. I want no monkey shines. You follow my orders. I want $40,000 in a paper bag. A brown paper bag, and I want you. What did they say? No trace for it, Bobbling. She's been missing since this afternoon. The fools! What do they think I'm paying them for? They let her go off any time she wants to. Jay, what'll we do? Shut up! Let me think. Hello. No. Mr. Rawlings? Yeah? Mrs. Phillips of Bobbling speaking. Well, what about my daughter? I'm frightfully upset, Mr. Rawlings. We've continued to check all possible sources of information. Yes, 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 yes. What'd you find out? We have another witness, one of our girls here at Bobbling, who claims she saw Millicent enter an automobile this afternoon. She got into a car this afternoon? A blue or a black sedan. As for other details... Well, whose car was it? That we don't know. Ah, so... But we are continuing to check all possible... Uh, there you are. Missing for hours and nobody knows anything. Nobody reports anything. I can't stand this much longer, Jay. I'll sue that college. I'll drag him into court just as sure... Hello, hello. Rollins. Oh, it's you. About that 40,000. Where's my daughter? Don't ask questions, Rollins. I'll do the talking. What do you want? I want you to make it 50,000. But you can't. I said 50,000, you understand? If anything has happened to my daughter, I'll... Easy, mister. Talk like that can make a fella nervous. All right, all right, all right now. All right, what do you want? I want 50,000, I just told you. All right. And I want it in a manila envelope. You said a brown paper... Follow brown... instructions. I said a manila envelope. Do you understand? Yes, 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 yes. I'll do anything you want. Only tell me. Tell me where my daughter is. Where is she? What's happened? Quiet, Robert. I can't afford to waste any time on this phone. Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Right now, I don't want you to do anything except get that manila envelope ready. All right. And I want you to wait until you hear from me again. Yes, yes. Did you do what I told you, Rollins? Yes, yes, yes. Where, where do you want me to deliver? Everything's on the up and up. Yes, yes, I'll pay you anything, anything. Only get my daughter here. You'll get final instructions at 7 o'clock tonight. All right, all right. Please, mister, give me a break, will you? My wife, my daughter. But, oh, wait a minute. Please don't hang up now. Seven, seven o'clock. What did he say, Jay? Seven o'clock. We've got to wait till seven. <laughs> Five minutes past seven. I doesn't need call. I got everything ready. Money, the envelope. Why doesn't the phone ring? What's the matter, Jay? What's holding him? He said seven. I don't know. I don't know, Ethel. Oh, please don't keep asking me questions. I don't know what... I don't know where I am. Stop bothering me, will but you? But he said seven. Seven o'clock, and it's eight minutes past. Will you be patient? <laughs> you just sit there and be quiet. We have to wait, that's all. We have, just have to wait. Further instructions. That's what he said. Maybe we'll have to wait another 50 or 60 minutes. 
Maybe another 50 or 60 days. I don't know. I wish you'd do something. It's waiting. I'm doing everything I can. All I can do is follow orders. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Ethel. Oh, I don't know what I'm thinking. That phone. Why doesn't it ring? The door, James. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm in just a minute, just a minute. This jaw lock. Oh, it's you, Millicent. Hello, Dad. Oh, Millicent, my baby. Oh, what are you crying for, Mother? You all right, Millicent? You all right, aren't you? You're not hurt? The man didn't... The, the, that man who drove you here, where is he? He just drove away in his car. He didn't want to come in. Well, who is he? What's his name? Oh, I can never remember his name, and I didn't like to ask him. But you know him, Dad. He works for you. Works for me? What do you look like? Oh, middle-aged, thick glasses, and sort of bald. Wait a minute. Wait. Thick glasses, and a slight scar along his chin? Yes, that's the man. Bibbins. He's one of the nicest men I've ever met, Dad. Why, that... that criminal? I'll have the police. Just a second, please, Jay. You say Mr. Bibbins took you away from Bobolink this afternoon. Well, he didn't take me, exactly. He drove by the college this afternoon and asked me to hop into his car. He said you wanted to see me because there was a big surprise at home. Millicent, how could you? Oh, but Mother, he was always so kind to me at Dad's office. I'll have that moron in jail in less than 24 hours. So help me, I'll get the police. What in the world is the trouble, Dad? Do you know that you have almost been the death of your father, Millicent? Oh, Mother, I'm trying to tell you. I merely thought that... Didn't you have sense enough to see through Mr. Biffins? I don't know what you mean. You sat there in the car and let him take you. A, a, a man who's almost a stranger, you let him take you wherever he wanted to go. Oh, Dad, please believe me. Mr. Bibbins is a kind man. I know he's kind. I knew he was taking me home. Didn't you expect me? Well, maybe he does have a peculiar sense of humor. He gave me this for you. What is it? It's a note. Some kind of message. For me? Mr. Bibbins said I should give it to what him. What is it, J.J.? memorandum. Read it. Says, uh, there wouldn't be any use telling my name. You wouldn't want to remember me anyway. You wouldn't want to remember me anyway. I happen to be only another number in your files. That's about all any of us were, J.J. Just numbers in your files. You remembered only numbers. I don't think you ever really got to know people. The fellows and the girls who worked with you and for you. Looking back over all the weeks, the months that I spent in your employ, I can say this now. The office was swell, J.J. The workers, the fellows and the girls in the office, they were friendly, kind, a great gang. And the wages were good. There's no kick there. It was only you, J.J. You're a man of distinction, your friends say. But you ranted and bullied, J.J. Oh, sure, I took orders. When you have a wife and kids to support, when you have bills to pay and a house to keep going, you learn how to take orders, your kind of orders. And then... And then you... You broke me with a blue slip. A blue memorandum. My services were no longer required. Okay. Okay, J.J. Now I'm giving you a memorandum. I had my innings, too, for a few hours today. I had you taking orders, and you took them, and why? Because for the first time in your life, you had something else besides numbers to worry about. Your daughter's a sweet girl, J.J. I hope you never stick that kid in the miscellaneous fire. And I hope you remember this. Numbers don't sweat and bleed and cry for you. People, people do those things people. And this is my memorandum to you. This is my memorandum to you. P.S. Give my love to Millicent. <laughs> you like the way I tell a story, Milton? That's the funniest story I've heard in years, Dad. <laughs> yeah, you're marvelous. You're a genius. Uh, speaking of geniuses, Ethel, I must tell you about my special genius. Splendid worker. Magnificent instincts. Who is he, darling? Bibbins. Oh, he's back again. Of course, he's back again. 
When J.J. says come, they come. Bibbins is the swellest guy, Dad. <laughs> oh, good old Bibbins. Yes, maybe it was the inflection of J.J.'s voice when he said, Bibbins, that accounts for it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am not posing as an authority on human relations when I say there is a nice capacity in people for being kind. It's a virtue, really. It means being helpful and considerate. In the truest sense of the word, it is actually loving our neighbor. And that's important. It's fundamental elementary procedure, as J.J. would put it, and it's the procedure that J.J. forgot for a time. You know, we'll never be able to solve the real problems until we stop talking about numbers, about majorities and minorities. We'll never solve our domestic, social, even economic problems until we get away from numbers and get back to flesh and blood, back to people. Our country takes in just about everybody. It takes in all the segments of the land, high and low, rich and poor, capital and labor, all one family. To work together, all of us, as one big family, should be our ideal. And there is no better way to reach these ideals than to work together and pray together. To pray not only as individuals, but as a family. It's important, family prayer. For families that pray together, stay together. Before saying goodnight, I would like to thank Lionel Barrymore for his performance as J.J. Our thanks to Timothy Mulvey for writing tonight's play and to Max Turr for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Lila Webb, Howard McNear, Barbara Fuller, and Nancy Shields. Next week, our Family Theatre star will be Mark Stevens in The Hound of Heaven. Your hostess will be John Caulfield. This is Ricardo Montalban saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Join us next week at the same time when our Family Theater star will be Mark Stevens. Joan Caulfield will be your hostess. Tony Lafrano speaking. Remember, next Sunday, September 28th, daylight saving ends for this year. For those of you who are on standard time, Family Theater will come to you one hour later. For exact time in your community, consult your mutual station or newspaper radio listing. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.